to In My Mug episode 225 on Monday the 4th of March 2013, not 12, 13. I am your host Stephen Layton and this week I am mostly excited about the new guest blend and I'm going to tell you more about that in the news. So, thank you very, very much for the kind comments about the new map bit last week. You seem to like it, like it a lot and I'm very pleased. I, there's lots of editing, there's lots of work involved in doing it, but it seems like it's worth it, and as long as you keep saying it's worth it, then I'll keep doing it. Um, so yes, thank you for that. It's, uh, it's nice when you get nice things back, um, so please keep them coming back. This month's guest blend went live, and it's so, so cool. 3D label, 3D video, and free 3D glasses with every bag. Only 500 again, because uh, limited edition, all the rest of it. Uh, bye, bye, bye. Uh, it will not be an In My Mug. And one of its components will also not be an In My Mug. And yes, Roland, I will promise very much, not Roland as in Daft Fat Roland, but Roland as in commenting Roland. Um, I promise uh, to try and keep this up. The Burundi Marami um, is just too small a lot. Uh, for an In My Mug, so we won't be seeing that, I'm afraid. And that was the news! So, time for 20 seconds on, and this week, for some reason, it's on India. Okay, we should do this, so are we ready? Coffee is grown in three regions of India, with Karanka, Kalaina and Tamil, forming the traditional coffee growing region of South India, with the coffee ta we're talking about today coming from Katanka, which is the biggest production of the area. In 2009, production and coffee of India was only 4.5% of the total world production, but almost 80% of it was exported. 20 seconds on. Not enough time to say that most of the coffee is exported to Germany and Italy. We take, Italy taking over 30% of their production, which I found astounding. I was very surprised at that. Um, and over the last 50 years, it's one country that has continued to increase its production and has grown by over 15%. Uh, but enough of that. Why the heck am I talking about India? Well, this week's coffee is called India Peebly Bold and it's from Asia. Yeah, you heard it right. An Indian coffee. Um... It's so great to have an Asian coffee on in my mug, but I have pained about this decision. I have tossed and turned in my sleep. Not because it's not delicious, as you find out if you taste it with an open mind, it really is. But it's harder to convince the geek groom that it's an amazing coffee because India just has such a bad reputation. Um, but this farm we've worked for for a long time now, it's like seven or eight years that I've been buying this coffee. And I'm so, so proud of what Fayaz does. Um, this week, it is more important than ever that you leave me comments, maybe in the website part, but maybe actually on the product on the website as a review um, of what you think of this coffee. And I don't mind if it's bad, and I don't mind if it's good, as long as you can justify it and back it up. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, a bit about the farm. The farm is five hours drive towards the coast from Bangalore to the small town of Sooty Copa. I'm sure that's completely wrong, um, which has a population of 20,000 and is amongst the Cork Hills of southern India. This is like the growing region of India. Katanka State um, is the biggest growing region in the whole of India um, and has uh, lots of small and medium sized farms. Located between 600 and 800 metres above sea level, uh, owned by a guy called Fayaz Muskulti, uh, and the farm is called Bibi Plantation. Um, this is super low in altitude, like scarily super low. I don't think we've ever bought a coffee this low, but it still goes to prove that altitude has very little reflection on how it tastes. Um, the farm is 250 acres, um, which is huge for India, uh, which is huge for anywhere to be fair, and has been in the Muscolti family since 1960, and is named after Fayaz's mother. Um, Fayaz took over the farm in 1990, and has spent most of his time in since then replanting, working on the farm, improving quality. Um, and for me, it produces some of the finest, best, amazing Indian coffee I've ever tasted. 
Uh, Fayez lives on the farm with his wife, Sonia, and their two children, uh, Rian and Tara. Uh, and um, he works really hard trying to uh, work in a very organic way. Although he's not certified, he doesn't use chemicals, doesn't use weed killers. Uh, everything is done by hand. Uh, Re-energises with green compost from the farm. Um, just really careful not to want to put poison into the ground. And you know what? Most farmers who we work with don't want to be poisoning their land. Um, but also don't want to go through the immense pain of becoming certified organic. Um, it's a really big hoop for a farmer to jump through to, to get that certificate um, when they're doing those things already. So lots of farmers just don't bother and Fayaz is, is one of those. Um, he has a hundred people working on the farm. Um, and around about half of them actually live on the farm where he provides free electricity, free medical assistance, free housing um, and basically looks after the workers. Uh, workers can apply for free loans to assist with education for the children and pay back as, um, pay back as they can afford to basically. Um, and he sees his workers as his family. Um, and that's something that I can kind of relate to as well, because the guys who work with us here, you know, kind of, you do, you become a family and you kind of look after each other. And, and that's something Fayaz has very much taken to heart. And I think that's why I like working with him. And, and I'm sure that has a, a part on why his coffee tastes so good, because happy workers do good work. And um, yeah, this, this is great coffee and they're doing great work there. So the farm is called Bibi Plantation. The varietal is red katai. Uh, um, it's a fully washed dried on patios, grown at around about 800 metres above sea level, and he's from Kantanka State, which is near, in the near to the town of uh, Sunti Copa. And that's quite a bit of information to take in. But while we're doing information, let's do the map bit. No expense, but yeah, I'll let the spinning face do the singing. It's the map bit. No expense spent. It's the map bit. It's a good job you lot told me you like this because I cannot tell you how much editing it is to make these maps. But let's do this. So we zoom back down to has been and we zoom straight back out. Wow. In and out. Um, and what we're going to do is going to take a little look at the world here. Now, this is a way we don't normally go. And what we're looking at is Asia. Um, and for Asia, we're going to look at the uh, continent. So there's a eight growing countries, has a huge population, a huge surface area, many times huger than the UK surface area. Um, the population is just immense when you look at it. And a lot of the population is here down in India. So let's drill down into uh, the India part here and uh, open up the India slide sorry i'm having a problem uh here we go we're getting there so open up the slide uh, and of course the name is india the population here is uh 1241 million um with a huge size again uh, and the capital being new delhi i often wonder what happened to old delhi um, yeah, sorry, but yeah, New Delhi is the capital. Um, but what we're interested in, we can see the little pointers come up on the map there. So we want to get down and see the states. Now it's on the border of the, the, the key states and it's pretty much in the heart of the coffee growing region. But it's on the edges of the mountain range. If you look to the right, you can see the mountain ranges there and uh, towards the coast almost. So you can see uh, why it has this uh, lower um, altitude. Beautiful view of the farm, beautiful coordinates as well again, but you can see that strip of land, lots of forest land to go with it too. Um, I've took that off because I want to zoom into the house. We can even see Fayaz's house here, um, which is quite remarkable and, and, and really cool to get that level uh, level of detail on, on a map bit. It's quite difficult sometimes to get the coordinates from producers because they don't have a way of doing so. But here's some photos from the farm. So we can see uh, that's, that is actually Fayaz there in the top right. Uh, and these are some of the people who work on the farm. Um, these were taken by the uh, UK importer. We buy this coffee off and they're regular visitors to see Fayaz. And he's a regular visitor to, to London as well. So um, let's just zoom up and get that farm view again. 
And while we have that farm view, let's talk about the farm. So it's called Bibi Plantation, altitude of 800 meters above sea level, varietal is red Katayi, and the nearest town is Santa Copa. And the cow, somebody suggested it was called Beryl, but Dale said that he didn't mind if it was called Dale as well, so I'm afraid it's going to be called Dale. So let's just zoom back out, and that was the map bit. And it's that time of the day for Roland's Daft Fact. So, Roland! Roland's Daft Fact of the Week. Everyone knows that Brazil, Vietnam, Colombia and Indonesia grow lots of coffee. But did you know that India was also in the top five of coffee producers? Ahead of Ethiopia, Honduras, Peru and Guatemala. But that's because over two thirds of its production is robusta. Yeah. Roland's Daft Fact of the Week. I'm not sure I approve of Roland's spitting. I don't think that's very hygienic at all. So now it's time to make some coffee, but before that we have to do the Wheel of Death. So last week we had... Can we remember what it was last week, people? Uh... Clever. It was Clever Dripper. Clever Dripper. Ooh, forgot then. So we're going to replace that with espresso. And oh, put it the right way though, Steve. Come on, get in the programme. Right, Wheel of Death, where it goes, nobody knows and nobody cares. And this week we have Aeropress with Disc. So this is with the little discs that are reusable instead of the paper. So that's what we shall be brewing with this week, which is fine. I kind of like that. We've got the fine discs and we've got the, the slightly coarser discs. Um, I don't know which one we'll be using, whichever one falls to hand first, but that's good. We can talk about the AeroPress a little bit and um, we're going to whack you on pause and I'll be back with you in just a second. And we are back and I'm going to dive straight into the espresso. So. Now, the one thing with Indian coffee is it has big body. The acidity is nil. Some people are going to adore this coffee, and some people do. Like, that's why we keep stocking it, because some people really, really love that. It has a, a tobacco in a really good way, and it has a, a leather in a really good way. Now, those two descriptors are rarely in a good way. But with this, I think it is. But there's a sweetness there. There's like... A toffee apple, burnt toffee kind of sweetness, which is really, really interesting. Mm. And that's a great espresso. And I'm, so much so I've got it all over my nose. Into the milk. Now, I've been struggling with milk for a long time. Anybody who watches this knows. That's my best cappuccino in a long time. Like a long, long time. That is... Delicious, like really good. I actually like that. So, the Wheel of Death gave us the fine disc. Well, it gave us the disc. I chose the fine disc. This is my my weapon of choice. Abel will do things in a really nice way. They put a little uh, kind of idea of what to do um, with the brew. It's wrong. It's not as good as my brew method. Go watch the uh, has been AeroPress brew guide. But it's nice, comes nicely packaged. Um, can I get the disc out without covering myself in coffee? So, ooh, no, I can't. There's the disc. Don't know if you can see that. The fine one gives you a slightly cleaner cup, but you still get some solids come through, so do not expect the same as paper. It is slightly different. Um, I still have a, a leaning towards paper, if I'm honest. But I can also see the benefit in having a reusable disc, particularly when you're travelling. Um, I remember when uh, I first, when the AeroPress first came out, I used to cut out discs out of the gold um, filters. What were they called? Oh, gold filters, maybe. But like the reusable filters. I can't remember what they're called. But anyway, um, so it's nice that they come ready cut. And these things are precision designed. They are really, really well designed. Super thin. I, mean, I don't know if you saw me flex it, but... Like you can flex it very easy. They are really, really delicate pieces, but very cool. So well done to the guys at Able. You can buy the discs off the website for your AeroPress. So, oh, the mug. I should tell you about my mug. 
Um, I've got my Force India mug, India coffee, India mug. Ha! I'm just so topical and on game. But also, tomorrow, well, to yesterday, okay, today's Saturday, I'm recording it Saturday, because uh, I'm running tomorrow at Silverstone, uh, doing the uh, Adidas half marathon there. Um, so, Formula One, Force India, India coffee, it was meant to be. That's what I'm saying anyway. Mm. Okay, so this is perhaps the one place I don't enjoy it as much because I do like acidity and the, the acidity in the brewed coffee, I do like the acidity and there's perhaps not the acidity in there that I would like. It has base notes. As an espresso, I think it definitely wins. In fact, as milk, it definitely wins. Espresso, it's a real win, but the brewed is also, also lovely. So without further ado, we should do Pinboard of Doom. And this week's Pinboard of Doom is not very seasonal or very topical. Um, this was sent in to me, oh, I can't remember the name, I'm going to put it on the screen now, uh, very kindly, um, before Christmas, just before Christmas, and it was a lovely Christmas decoration, and I like the photo very, very much. It's taken me this long to get around to putting it up, but I only have a handful left. So please, 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 I beg of you, send me some Pinboards of Doom in this week. Um, I would love them. It takes me a while to get through them when I do these, please. But it would be absolutely excellent. Thank you. Um, so, yes, thank you very much for sending that in. Um, and now it's time for Descriptor Scale! Descriptor Scale! So this week's Descriptor Scale has come in from Dick Thomas. And Dick says... Uh, a filter blend was my favourite, uh, without bitterness, um, which I don't like about coffee. Um, so that's very cool, Dick. Thank you. If you drop me an email, I will send you your descriptor scale badge. Um, and moving swiftly on to the stack clip. This week's staff clips comes from somebody who I've known her whole life. It's my baby sister. Come on, baby K. Hey, very adult. Mom would be super proud of you. Sorry. So, the winner of last week's prize that I said I would give out for anybody who left a review on the site. All I have, it's James from Durham, who uh, left a review on the Burundi that said, definitely wrote about it being great brewed coffee. Using a French press, I maybe don't get some of the subtleties that are described, but it's certainly plenty of fresh fruit acidity, really big and complex mouthfeel. James, that's awesome. Drop me an email with your address and I will post the two bags of coffee out to you. Um, Thank you to everybody who uh, entered the competition. It was really cool to see all the reviews coming through, like really, really cool. Uh, and lots of you participated, so thank you. And to carry on that, I'm gonna have another competition this week. So the Rwanda Marama I talked about in the news that won't be in my mug because it's too small a lot and too expensive. Um, well, it's not too expensive because we've had more expensive coffees than that on in my mug, but there's, there's not enough of it, it's a very small lot. Um, if you want to win a bag of that, you have to leave a review, but it has to be on the India Peabury Bowl from this week's In My Mug. So if you are a subscriber, or if you are not a subscriber, you need to buy this coffee, taste it before next Friday, and uh, I will choose a winner at random um, who leaves a review for the India Peabury Bowl. So please get on with that, and you can win a bag of the Rwanda Marama, which is £8.50 a bag, um, and I will post it to you for free too. So you double, double win. Okay, time to wrap up. Thank you very, very much for joining me. Um, I do appreciate it. Uh, wish me the best for my run tomorrow um, at Silverstone. And do remember, life is too short for bad coffee. Or bad F1 teams. Sorry, Force India. <laughs>